Here are a few of the latest clippings from the auto industry recall department. First, GM is still having brake problems with its 1980 front drive X-Body cars. That would include the Chevy Citation, Pontiac Phoenix, Olds Omega, and Buick Skylark. On manual transmission models, the rear brakes can lock up under heavy braking conditions. GM thought they had the problem fixed two years ago, but the government told them to try again. And Ford is recalling some 1977 through 1979 Pintos, Bobcats, and Mustang Twos. It seems the metal blades on the engine cooling fans may fracture under stress from vibration. Over at Chrysler, 60,000 1983 four-door Chrysler LeBarons, E-Class cars, Plymouth Reliance, Dodge Aries, and 600s are all being recalled to eliminate a possible brake fluid loss. This could happen from a brake hose rubbing against an exhaust system bolt. From the land of the midnight sun, Volvo announced a recall of early 1982 model DL and GLs equipped with electronic computer control. A bad connection can cause intermittent stalling and misfiring. And from the land of the rising sun, Subaru says the wiring harness on some manual transmission 1981-82 models could chafe against the battery hold-down rod, causing an electrical short and possible fire. Now, there are a lot of other recall notices we don't have time for, but these are enough for us to remind you to head for your dealer if you get one of them. Take the time to keep your car as safe as it should be. Now, Joyce, let's get back to luxury cars. What's Ford got for us? Well, John, I'm not sure if this is a car or an electronic video game. Is this Pac-Man on wheels? <laughs> That's very good. Let me show you what it is. This is the Lincoln Continental Concept 100 show car. We took a look at it at the New York Auto Show, and believe me, it's an electronic wizard's delight. Outside, you'll see it's dramatic, with an aerodynamic low profile, sloping windshield, and covered headlamps. Now, in the rear, you're going to see that that classic Continental kit is remaining. But what's new is that shark fin antenna, and that's the key to the electronic wizardry. Inside, the focal point of the front seat just has to be that little console screen that gives you a variety of computer readouts. This is the hub of a satellite navigation system, the key function of a multi-display information system they call a trip monitor. Now, the trip monitor is using data from orbital satellites, and it allows you to accurately plot your position on a map. Those signals are received through that antenna on the rear deck. The trip monitor gives you trip information, automatic temperatures, and time. You know, you can even call up distance traveled and fuel economy. A graphic warning display tells you if you have any problems, such as low tire pressure or a door ajar. And there's one new feature I really like. Some cars already talk to you, but on this one, it lets you talk back. Through a microphone on the steering column, you can give a command to raise or lower the antenna, turn the wipers on, or turn the headlights on. John, those gadgets just keep going on and on and on. But one last one. If you get tired of those computer readouts, then you can go in the back seat and play video games because they have designed a video game right into the back of that front seat. You're kidding. No. Are we going to see anything like the Concept 100 on sale anytime soon? You know, as a matter of fact, next fall, the Lincoln Mercury Mark 7 is coming out, and it's going to have the same basic car without the electronics. Now, that will replace the Mark 6. That's right. And yeah. again, the emphasis is very, very heavy on aerodynamics, because this redesigned Mark 7 is much newer looking, sleeker, lighter, and smaller. It's weighing in at 3,500 pounds. Now, that's 500 pounds lighter than its predecessor and a foot shorter. Now, like the Concept 100, the Mark is going to have those handsome flush-mounted headlamps. And in the rear, you're going to find very thin vertical taillights. They're barely legal. There'll only be a two-door model available. The power is going to be a five-liter fuel-injected gas V8, which is coupled with a four-speed automatic. By mid-84, Ford plans to use a BMW-built 2.4-liter inline six-cylinder diesel. And one other interesting thing, you're going to be cruising on Goodyear-developed computer-controlled air spring suspension system. And what that means is that it automatically adjusts to weight distribution. Mm. There'll be three levels of trim. You're going to have the standard luxury, the designer model, and the luxury sports coupe. Now, that last one marks the return to the hot rod Lincoln. Really? After all these years? That's right. But you know, looking at these pictures, it still looks an awful lot like the Thunderbird. 
It is. It's the same chassis as the T-Bird, but like the T-Bird, it just kind of has the styling goes one step further. Mm, except for that rear tire hump. It looks out of place. Thanks, Joyce. Keep us up to date. Okay.